Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rebecca, creator of Ganji Plans Printables at ganjiplans.com. Uh, every month for the first video of the month, I like to make a video going over all of the inserts that I created and released in the month before to give you an idea of how I um, intend to use them in my own system, my own thought process behind designing them, and the ways that I think that they could be used just to give you some ideas and inspiration for using my inserts in your own planner system. So today's video we're going over all the inserts released in October 2021. So the month of October had a theme and that theme was yearly inserts and planner setup basically for the new year. So now that it's November things are coming around the corner. If you're thinking of not thinking about Christmas, you're probably thinking about getting your uh, planner set up for 2022. So I've got you all covered. Um, very first to begin with, this insert uh, is insert 14. This has been in the shop since launch, um, but it was the only dated insert in the shop. Um, so it has been updated now for 2022. It's available as just one bundle. Uh, at, at one point I was selling them as quarters, but it's just easier this way and the pricing is also better. Um, so nothing new here. If you've seen this one before, I am actually using it currently in my planner. So you'll have seen it in my recent plan with me's and stuff. Um, note that this is formatted to be printed and used in a traveler's notebook as well. So if you use that system, this is already formatted for you. It makes it a little bit easier. Um, it's a little messy if you're only looking to print out one month at a time, but then you just save the rest for later. You got the whole year set up. Now here's the new stuff. Insert 52 is the 52 weeks future log, which first of all, I'm very pleased with myself for making that line up um, and work. And also I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. So this one is a dated uh, future log for the whole year and it fits on two pages here. You see there's formatting here uh, two different ways. On pocket, it fits on one page, but in other sizes, obviously it'll be just an extra set of pages and you can choose whether you want January on the right and then July on the back or whether you want January on the left and July on the right. Um, and it's just very classy, I feel. Uh, you've got just a line here for every week of the year. So I think this would be really, really great for if you're looking to like plan out some less date specific projects you know you're like okay i know that things are going to get busy because we all have a lot of birthdays in march or whatever um, i'm pointing to may um because we actually do have a lot of birthdays in may i think and so you can sort of plan backwards and say okay well then i'm going to work on you know this one this week and this one this week or you can say all right this week i'm going to clean the, the house because i know that i'm going to need to for visitors coming i don't know I kind of like to try to spread out my projects if I can um, plan ahead. And so you've got one week here. It could also be for like weekend plans. Um, so you could just look and say, all right, this is the weekend plans here. Um, all of these, if they're undated, we're going to be a Sunday start because it's just the way I think of calendars. I think a lot of us probably do because that's what the standard calendar format will be. Um, so if it's not labeled, it's going to be a, a Sunday start. And anyway, every other month is just a slightly lighter shade of gray just to differentiate, but otherwise everything runs into each other. So you see you've got, you know, February to March, March to April in one week. Obviously that's the way time works. Um, and then the, um, the line on the side sort of marks out where the month starts and ends as well. Insert 53. Uh, it's called Don't Break the Chain. It's also just called a year at a glance, uh, whichever you prefer. It's a pretty basic uh, insert in the pocket size like this. They all jut up, all, all the months jut up into each other like this. Um, every other size has a space between months. Um, you'll have seen this already if you look at the previews on the website or if you saw my stories uh, over the last month. Uh, basically this gives you a box for every day of the year so that you can fill it in when you get a thing done. Um, you could use this as like a tracker or you could use this to do the Jerry Seinfeld method, which is what it's named after. Don't break the chain where you basically just set a goal and you fill in the box for every day you get it done. Um, and then, you know, you're motivated by seeing the colors fill up. Um, you could even change colors every month. So that's the idea. It could also just be something at the front of your planner to show you, 
you know, what the year looks like. Um, but it's very minimalist because it doesn't have any of the uh, the month names written out, given the idea that most people know what order the months come in. And especially if you're going sequentially, you're going to be coming back to this every day. You're not going to have to go like, okay, where is September? Because you're already there. Insert 54 is another dated future log. This one is a little bit more relaxed and spread out than uh, the 52. This one will have four months per page instead of six. So you have a little bit more room. It's more traditional looking where you've got, you know, your month here and then a little bit of space for a date and an event. Um, and then if these six lines per month were not enough, then there's also this at the end of the insert, you've got space for a date and then a, an event or task. So this column here, we see has room for like, yeah, month, month, dash, day, day, or something like that um, to fill it all in there. And whenever I have a grid column for a number, I always make sure there's enough so that you can have one column per digit because uh, I'm a bit, a bit anal that way. If you see my NaNoWriMo bundle, you'll know that uh, I like to do it that way. So this is overflow, or you could put tasks here and events here, or however you like. This one isn't split up by any particular... Uh, month, so you just have to, you know, you could highlight it when you've moved it to a monthly or something. Insert 55. This one is designed for birthdays and anniversaries. You could obviously use it for anything. I'm sure you could use it for, you know, for a future log if you were creative. Uh, but I have already set this up in my planner. You'll have seen it. Um, and I am liking it. It's working really well. It's across two pairs of pages, you know, front, back, front, back. So you've got three months per page, and then you put the day, like, so January, say January 2nd, I think is maybe my, something like that. Um, you put, you know, 02 or just two, then the name of who it is, whose birthday it is, and then the year they were born. That way, when it comes around, you may have to do a little bit of math every year. But you're never going to have to redo this. You can just keep adding to it as you meet people, as people join your family by birth or marriage or adoption or however. Um, and just keep adding on and you will never have to rewrite the year they were born. Because that, unless you're some weird alien, doesn't change. Um, and so then you'll be like, okay, yeah, I was born so many, so many years ago. And you're like, what? Kids, they say he's in high school and he was born after. It's like, yeah, yes. We're all getting old, but that's why we have birthday celebrations and you can never forget everyone's birthdays using this insert. Insert 56 is the year in pixels. This is a thing I've seen in Bujo's. People have been doing this for a few years. Um, I mean, probably longer than that because I can't keep track of time. Uh, but basically, it's like another yearly tracker thing, but this one is color based. So you've got uh, 12 columns. See that, you know, they're the number of pixels per month, you know. So you can fill in each of these boxes with a different color. Fill in your key with up to eight different colors. I suppose you could add more if you have a pen, which I think we all do. Um, and so you would use this for tracking moods, for tracking productivity, say, you know, it can be like, okay, yeah, uh, this dark purple is for if I get this many things done and you're, or whatever. Um, and then you can sort of track trends with a pretty color over time. I see this a lot of times with like moods, um, if you're looking to sort of keep track of how you're feeling. Um, I think that can also be really useful uh, if you're looking to like see how your mood is affected by like hormonal changes and stuff like that over the course of a month. Um, so there you go. You could use this as any kind of tracker, but you, know, you might have to cover up the title here in pixels. Insert 57 has been surprisingly really cool. I set, I started using this like in earnest recently when I did a kind of major overhaul to my planner setup, which I keep talking about. That's next week's video. So you will get to see it finally. Um, and I've already shown this insert in use on my Instagram though. The concept is simple enough. You generally like default with your planners. I know Filofax comes this way with a set of six tabs. Uh, generally that is the most common number of tabs that I have seen available. So that's why it has six. If people who want, have like four tabs really want this for four tabs, like tell me, I'll make it for you. 
But uh, so we just have six right now. Basically, uh, instead of having to put a label on each tab, which like I'm not a huge fan of. I just, I don't like the idea of something that's such a high touch surface having a sticker on it. I feel like it's going to peel off over time and be weird, or it's going to be super permanent and never be able to change. The nice thing about this, and that is, this is a complete coincidence, is that in the pocket size, uh, these boxes are exactly the height of a post-it flag. So that's handy. Um, so I was able to combine the concept of my post-it sticky, or post-it index that I've used for like a couple of years um, into this. So basically, instead of labeling your tabs, you just put this either in the front or the back. But there's also a version here without numbers, if you prefer the minimalist look. Um, and then you just put what's there. So I have it in the back so that the front is all pretty and like Instagram worthy or whatever. And then in the back, um, I can just flip to it and say, okay, this is what's behind tab one, two, three, four. Um, and behind tab six, like looking from the front back, I just have spare paper, but I have stuff that's in front of tab one. So I have it like offset by one, but it makes sense if it's in the back. Uh, I will show you that again in my flip through next week. So stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video while you're down there. Okay. Um, but yeah, you just fill out what's there. And if you use a sticky note, you can move stuff around super easy, or obviously you can print out more than one of these and redo it every time you redo your planner. And that way when you reorganize everything, it makes more sense to you as you're reorganizing it, but then you get lost and you forget where you put everything. But here you just write it down and you can just glance at this to know which tab where everything is. So there you go. It's very useful to get used to your new setup before it becomes like second nature. The very last insert for this month is insert 58. Obviously the far future log. This is something I've been an advocate for for years, like before I had an insert shop or anything to sell you about it. But um, I always think that the future log as shown in the like start here, how to set up a Bujo video by writer Carol, which is perfect in its own way, but the future log in there is insufficient. He's like, oh, here there's space and for the next six months. And you're like, okay, but like the example I always give, what about the dentist? <laughs> you go to the dentist and they give you an appointment six months out, which is great for maybe the first half of the year because you still have your future log set up for the current year. But like, you're going to need somewhere to put appointments and things that roll over into the next year or things that you just want to keep track of, you know, like you have a sub, uh, something you pay for that lasts multiple years, but then it's going to renew and you want to know when that happens. You want to know when your car seats expire and you want to know when, you know, all kinds of stuff. So um, there's a column for the year and you can use this for multiple years if you want. I will probably use this and remake it every year, take anything that's for the next year, move it to the current like future log for the year, and then just leave stuff that's still in the far future. So you put the year that the thing is happening, the month, the day. So that makes it nice and, you know, I don't know, tidy that way. Um, and then what the event is, it's very simple, but that's the concept behind it is that you need to have a space for stuff that's in the far future. And this is that space. And that was, that was actually a very succinct description. So now we're done. <laughs> There you have it. Lots of inserts this month. Uh, let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite, which one you're looking forward to the most to trying out for yourself. I know I am definitely looking forward to using a new future log in the new year. If you're new here, or at least if you're not subscribed, you should know that I post planner videos about my whole planner system every Thursday. So if you're interested to see more of that, uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you in the next video on Thursday. I mentioned that's going to be um, a new setup and planner system, uh, like flip through for a uh, the, the new month. So I will see you in the next video on Thursday. Bye.